Hi, I'm Richard from Plan Photonics and welcome to video number six in our series of LED grow light technology videos. Today we're going to be talking about power supplies. Now, there's actually two different types of power supplies that are used in LED grow lights and you need to use the correct type for your application. The two types are constant voltage and constant current. So let's go to the computer and take a look at the difference between those two power supplies and when you're going to be using each type. In this diagram, we've got 10 LEDs connected together in series. That's basically end to end. That's the sort of connection that you'd find in pretty much any LED grow light. You can find anywhere from 10 to 40 or 50 LEDs connected together in one long string. Now here we've got a constant voltage power supply attached to it, which is putting in 30 volts. So that's three volts per LED. The LEDs are happy. They're running at their standard output level. Now, if a LED blows, we've got a problem because the voltage stays at 30 volts and each remaining LED is now getting 3.3 volts. Now, if you watched the second video, you'll know that the current drawn by the LED increases really, really rapidly as the voltage goes up. Now, in this example, for you've got at 700 milliamps, which is their standard operating current, you get at about 2.35 volts. Now, going point just uh, one volt higher, and your current's gone up to one amp, a thousand milliamps, and the lead would blow. So, putting it up by point three of a volt is going to result in ten very dead leads. Now, that's with a constant voltage power supply. Now, the other type is constant current. Now, again, we've got a constant current power supply, and it's putting out seven hundred milliamps. And in this case, it's adjusted its voltage to put out 30 volts, and each LED is getting 3 volts, so they're happy. If a LED blows, you'll see what's happened here is the power supply is still putting 700 milliamps through the string of LEDs, but it's detected that one of the LEDs has died, and it's dropped its output voltage to 27 volts. So each remaining LED still receives 3 volts, which is its optimum voltage. Now, this diagram shows the standard layout for a normal LED grow light using discrete separate LEDs. Now, what happens if we go to a cob LED? Now, this is what you actually get inside of a cob LED. It's basically a bunch of small chips in series, and then each of these series groups of LEDs is connected in parallel like this. So typically you'll wind up with up to a hundred small LED chips in there. Each one is effectively a LED. Now we'll stay with constant current power supply here. Now here we've got a constant current power supply and it's putting out 7,000 milliamps. So that's 700 milliamps for each of these series strings of LEDs. So everything's good. Now if a LED blows, what happens is it's still putting out the 7,000 milliamps and its ability to detect that this lead has failed is masked by or impeded by the fact you've got all these other rows of leads still working. So although it'll detect that small drop or a small increase, I should say, in the current, it will not be able to reduce it enough. It'll just reduce it about one-tenth the amount that you need. So it would reduce it by about 0.3 of a volt instead of 3 volts. And the result with that would be that the remaining LEDs in that row will blow out. Now there's a second and even more worrying result here. Now that we've only got 9 rows and it's still putting out 7,000 milliamps, the current for each row increases to 778 milliamps. Now they may or may not be able to withstand that long term. Probably, probably they will. However, if another one blows, it'll take out that row as well, and then the current increases to 875 milliamps, and they definitely won't take that for very long. And when another one blows out, it'll increase to 1,000 milliamps each row, and then the rest of them will just go off in a cascade, and you'll lose the entire chip. Now, if we go to a constant voltage power supply, okay, you've got your 30 volts going in across here, and each LED will receive 3 volts, 
so they're happy. You get a fault, okay? The remaining LEDs here get 3.3 volts, and these LEDs, the remaining LEDs down here, will still be getting their 3 volts. That'll lead that row to blow out. However, it will not cascade down because each remaining LED receives its 3 volts, which is what it needs. Okay, so the lesson here is that if you are doing discrete LEDs, you need to use a constant current power supply. If you're doing a cob LED, you need to use a constant voltage power supply. Right, so that pretty much sums up the two different types of power supplies. For a standard configuration LEDs in series, you need to use a constant current power supply. And if you're using cobs, you need to use constant voltage power supply. Now there is one other thing I'd like to show you uh, before we wrap up the video, and that is a couple of actual power supplies. Now this is the power supply from a plant photonics light. Okay, it's big, it's heavy, it weighs almost a kilogram. And this is the power supply from a Chinese light. Now, as you can see, there is one heck of a big difference between them. And surprisingly enough, you will actually find similar units to this inside some pretty well-known and very expensive LED lights. And these are critical, folks. I mean, this is the heart of your, your light, apart from the LEDs. Power supply is about the most important thing in there. So you really, really do need to, to make sure you buy something with decent power supplies like these. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something new. If you do, please, please subscribe, please comment, and please like the video. So thank you very much, and happy growing.